Well, thanks once again for joining me. Now, this episode is a little bit different because I'm actually out here on location and I'm waiting for the sun to set and I'm looking at the weather conditions and so forth. So in other words, I'm out on a different shoot. But while I was there, I thought I'd put this video together because a lot of people ask me about gear and stuff that I use. This is a little bit different to that. Um, I'm not gonna do a what's in my bag because I can't fit all my stuff in my bag. <laughs> There's way too much stuff. But what I'm going to show you now is handy things that I think you guys should consider having in your bag because I have all of these at hand every time I go out to shoot. So I'm going to show you those now. Now, the first one is this little gadget. Now this is a standard corded remote control. It's just a push button and you can turn it on, turn the camera off. You don't have to worry about wireless triggers. Now you know I use wireless triggers and I absolutely love the Yongnuo RF603s. But this is something you can just chuck in your bag, you can have it there, uh, cheap to buy, I think it cost me about 10 bucks. So I think that's a great thing to have. Uh, it, it doesn't get used very often, but when I need something, for example, if I've got an intervalometer and the batteries are flat and I haven't got any batteries, well, this comes in real handy. I can do it the manual way. Speaking of batteries, now, I, I know we talk a lot about batteries and that everyone should have their uh, camera batteries and they should have their batteries for everything. But you know, intervalometers, they go through batteries. Now I've got one here, let me just show you. This is the one I tend to use. Now this is a fairly cheap version. I bought this on eBay. Uh, they're available quite readily, uh, 25 bucks or so. Uh, the good thing I like about this one is it's got this little end which you can remove. So take it off like that. And this little plug is camera specific. So whatever camera you have, you need the right plug to suit it but it's a really good little gadget. So I use these. Now they take AAA batteries and they do eventually run out of battery power. Having said that, one of the interesting things about this one is that you can still operate it as a, as a um, push button remote trigger without batteries. It still works. So that's something to keep in mind as well. A lot of people think once the batteries go flat, they're useless. Not quite the case. Now talking about another thing I have in my camera bag, is this little holder. Now, if you have a close look at that, some of you might be smart enough to work out what that is. But what I use it for is to put the intervalometer into. So uh, it just keeps it at bay for, rather than sitting on the ground and getting wet when there's dew and all that sort of thing, works really well. Now on the back of it, I don't know if you can see, I've got Velcro. And what I've done, I've put Velcro on my tripod and just stick it on. Now you can think of some other method to attach it, maybe a hook or something, it doesn't matter. But it works really well. Uh, it does a couple of things. Firstly, it keeps it nice and neat. Secondly, it keeps it from getting dew all over it because I know when I'm doing um, star trials and things like that, these things are out for hours under the night sky and it gets really, really cold. So it just protects it and, and in doing so, keeps the battery life a little bit longer than it normally would. All right, what's next? Ah, speaking of the cold, now this is something that everyone probably has, and a lot of you guys live in climates that are far colder than where I live. This is Australia. Um, but having said that, I always have gloves with me. Now, if you have a close look at these ones, you'll notice that they are actually fingerless gloves over the top of standard gloves. And they're very light duty gloves. Now, I bought these, you'll laugh at me, I bought these at Kmart and they cost me five bucks. Five bucks, okay? The reason I bought these at Kmart for five bucks is because I've tried all the good ones. I've spent 40, 50, 60 bucks on gloves that are supposed to be really good in the dark and I'll tell you what, these kill them. Now I do wear them out, no worries about that, but I can afford to buy half a dozen packs of these and I use them all the time. Because they're fingerless, I've got a lot of um, dexterity in my fingertips here and I can actually use them to um, work my camera buttons really I can feel the buttons you know a lot of gloves don't it also works with a touch screen believe it or not five dollar Kmart gloves you can't go wrong with these beauties all right what's next in my bag yeah I've got a lot of stuff in here I'll tell you um, a lot of these are just really practical things um, but 
I'm not the youngest bloke in the world and one of the things that I need are glasses to see the screen. Now these are not prescription glasses. I do have prescription reading glasses but there's no way knowing I'm going to bring those out here in the field uh, because they wouldn't last five minutes. These cost me five bucks from the reject shop. Now you guys are going to think I'm a cheapskate but five dollars I've got quite a few pairs of these in my car. So I keep about three pairs in the car. I keep one in every camera bag that I've got. Um, and they mag they're just simple magnifiers. There's no prescription or anything. Anyone can, can wear these. And they're fantastic. I use them all the time because when I get close up stuff, especially on the screen, especially for focusing, I need glasses. So there you go. All right, what else have I got here? Still on practical stuff. Well, this is, this is a, a headlamp. Now, most of you would probably um, realize that if you look at my videos, I hardly ever use a headlamp. But uh, this is a good one. This is the LED Lenser uh, version. It's got some fantastic um, functions. Lasts forever. This is a rechargeable version. But of course, you can buy much cheaper ones and, and it'll do the trick. This one has a focusable beam. Um, and the only reason I I don't really like the the um, the weight on my head. <laughs> I know that sounds a bit weird, but I don't. The other thing I do not like, and you, some of you are going to crucify me for this, I do not like red lights. Okay. Now I know that red lights are standard equipment for night and astrophotographers all over the world. Well, you're not going to see me use a red light. I hate red lights because they're so invasive into the images that I'm shooting. For example, car headlights I can cope with, tail lights I can't because they just ruin the whole shot. Um, people talk about preserving night vision and I, I understand that, but uh, for the type of photography I do, I don't need to worry too much about preserving night vision because it's, um, I'm always light painting. I, I need to focus on things and I'm light painting subjects in the foreground. So every time I turn the light on, obviously my night vision is gonna be affected, but once I get my focus and everything else on my camera, doesn't matter. So uh, anyway, headlamp is a great idea, really good for hands-free operation uh, when you're walking around rocks and things like that. And I've done that quite a few times. Um, these things are a godsend, I'll tell you. Speaking of torches, this is the tiniest little torch you're going to ever see. Now, I, you know I use uh, torches for light painting and I've showed you those before. They're, they're the, the real good ones. But this is the tiniest little thing and you just turn it on. Now, why, you're going to ask me, why on earth would I have a little torch like this? Well, sometimes when I'm lighting things, and I'll show you some examples here. This lantern. Now, I've shot this lantern a few times, and because I'm shooting wide open at f1.4, sometimes f1.8, it just requires the most minimum amount of light that you could ever imagine. And this little thing, which I actually bought in a camping store. So it's a real little light. Uh, I think it's about daylight white balance. Um, so I don't bother gelling it or anything like that. It's just a tiny little, little light. Turn it on, do my light painting of my lantern. It's just on for a second and it does a trick really well. Only worth about five bucks once again. Really, really cheap. All right, now, a few other really basic things. This is a little towel that I carry with me everywhere I go. Now, one of the reasons I use this towel is to wipe things clean, because once again, when you get a lot of frost and dew on your lens uh, and your camera in general, I'm always wiping it down and wiping things clean. Tripods, they get slippery. So it's good just to have a towel um, you know, in your bag. They don't take up any room, but they're a really handy thing to have. Now, speaking of dew, one of the vital pieces of equipment that I always use is a lens hood. Now have a look at this. The lens hood comes off, of course, and the majority of people shoot their images like so. So you can see there that immediately the front element of the lens is exposed to any dew that might be coming down uh, during the, um, the shoot that you're doing. So the lens, whoops, the lens hood just helps a little bit with protection from dew. Um, I'm not talking about necessarily protection from falling over or anything like that, but it does do that as well. But it stops a lot of the dew because the dew hits the top of the lens hood before it hits the lens. Now, of course, I, I use lens warmers. You, you've seen me, I've talked about lens warmers at length. 
but that lens hood is my first stop for protection. It's the first port of call for uh, dew protection and I always have them on all my lenses. All right, what else have I got in here? A couple of other little things here you might think this is gaffer tape and this stuff is incredible. It holds cars together at the motor racing. It's just fantastic stuff. Now, you can hold tripods together with this. You can hold all sorts of equipment together. You can tape things onto your tripod legs. It's really valuable. Not that expensive, and a roll of this goes forever. The other thing that's, that goes along with that is electrical tape. Now, this is a fancy green and yellow color, uh, but electrical tape is also really handy just for quickly taping things up and getting yourself going if you uh, drop something and you, you, the screw falls out of your tripod or a light stand or something like that, bit of tape, no worries. The other thing that sort of goes with that a little bit is clamps. Now I've got a couple of clamps here. These are only really cheap ones. I bought them at, at the, I think Aldi or somewhere like that. Um, and once again, it helps just hold something onto a tripod leg or, or to the um, camera stand or whatever it is that you might be using. It might even be something you want to hook onto the, uh, the bottom of your camera bag. You know, something like that is just a really simple tool, really quick one-handed operation. You can operate them using gloves as well. So uh, of, oftentimes you'll find when you're wearing gloves, things are hard to operate. So you want something that's really something snappy like that, works a treat. Okay, now a couple of other things. This is a USB powered battery charger. Now, as you know, camera batteries uh, don't last well when you're operating in extreme cold weather. Um, and especially when you're doing long exposures and you're using a live view screen a lot. So this is a Night Core brand. I'll put that up on the screen so you can um, follow along. And it's fantastic. I plug it into the cigarette lighter in the car uh, while I'm driving along. It charges two batteries at once, one after the other. So um, I bought this on eBay, I believe. Um, they're probably available in camera stores. Small, compact. I can easily fit that in the camera bag. It just sits there most of the time. But when I need it, I need it. Now, this is one of the things that people ask me about all the time. So I'm going to show you a roll of this stuff. Now, this is the CTO gel that I use to cover my torches for my light painting. And this is known as half CTO gel. And what it does, it balances the, the somewhat blue color that LED torches have and gives it just a little bit more of an orange tone and brings it back to a, a, a better white balance, more closer to a daylight white balance. So what I do, I tape that across my torches, just cut a little bit off. You can see I've got a whole roll of it and it's fantastic stuff, um, but not very expensive. Uh, it cost me about $15 a roll, um, and it lasts a fair while, although I do give a lot of this away, so uh, I go through it, but um, it's half CTO gel. And in Australia, the part number is 205. For you guys in the US or in Europe or the UK, sorry, I'm not exactly sure what number it is, but it's a half CTO. It's not a full CTO, it's a half CTO gel. All right, well, we're going pretty well. Now just on that gel, I'll show you the torch that I use. This is a uh, LED Lenser P7.2. Fantastic torch. I've been using this for years. They're really hardy. Um, I've knocked it around, it's in my pocket. Throw it around in the camera bag a fair bit. It's zoomable, easy to operate one-handed, which I think is a really important thing. Um, so I wouldn't go anywhere without this torch. There are other good brands as well, that's, but this is the one that I use most of the time. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to show you here that relate to, to lighting as well to some degree, but um, you can see here I've got a little um, mounting with a light on it, and I use these a lot I guess that like a ball mount or something, I can hook that onto a tripod, I can put a flash on top of it, I can put a light like this on top of it, and I can swivel it around just like that. So these are pretty commonly available from um, eBay, and I use them for a lot of the equipment that I use, flashes, light stands, things like that. Um, now, Oh, now this is my uh, Yongnuo RF603 trigger. And what I want to show you with this is a cold shoe mount. 
Now you've probably heard of hot shoe mounts before, and a hot shoe mount is what's on top of the camera. So where your mount flashes on the top, uh, or whatever you want to mount in a hot shoe mount. A hot shoe mount takes current, so it's hot. Now a cold shoe mount doesn't pass any current through, so it's known as a cold shoe mount. And I use them all the time to mount accessories, because there's plenty of times when I want to remotely control my camera, but I also want to operate a flash, and so I need a flash trigger on the top. So I can't put this on the hot shoe mount. I need another mount, so I'm using, as you can see here, a cold shoe mount. It works really, really well. So I've had great success with those. Um, they're rugged. Uh, there's different types you can buy, but the one I use is made of metal, but it doesn't contact the contacts on the bottom of all of these devices. Now, the contacts um, do pass current, so you have to be careful sometimes, but the ones I use don't do that. They're just a cold shoe mount. Fantastic piece of gear. Now, what else have I got? Oh, now, you're going to laugh at me again, because this is one piece of equipment that you just cannot go without. Good boots. <laughs> now, they don't fit in my camera bag, okay, but these are invaluable because oftentimes uh, I'm in an environment where I'm wearing my, uh, my other shoes, which are still pretty rugged, but they're not heavy duty like this, and there's mud everywhere, and I think, no, I don't want to get that in the car. I don't want to drive the car home with mud all over my boots, so I put these on, and then when I'm finished, I can just belt them together and do all the things that you have to do to, to get rid of the mud, put my other shoes back on, and Bob's your uncle. We're all ready to go again. Now, no, I'm not going to bring slippers out, but I do bring slippers with me sometimes when I'm going to have a bit of a nap in the car and I want to keep my feet warm, but we're not going to go there today. All right, what else have I got? Oh, I must be nearly finished because this is only the, the extras. This is not my camera bag stuff. Um, I've got to be something else here. Oh, here we go. A stool. Now, I, I'm sure a lot of you are chuckling at my, my things that I bring with me. Believe me, I've got sore knees and sore ankles. And when I'm shooting and crouching down, I get really sore. So this is just a little three-legged camping chair. You can see it there. It works fantastically. And it just folds up. It's also really light, so I can actually hook that to my camera bag without any problems at all. Um, and I take this everywhere with me and believe me, it saved my legs quite a few times. Okay, well that's about all I've got for you about handy things to have in your camera bag. Hope you find it helpful. So, I'm just about to start an adventure out here. I'm really excited about this one. And this will be next week's video, but it's going to be awesome. Uh, I might even, I oh, don't know, I might give you a sneak peek. We'll just see how we go. I'm spending the night out here under the stars at this awesome, location but that's next week so hope you got something out of this video look forward to seeing you guys later see ya